You are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma podcast. Mike Hearn here, your host, back with another episode. Excited to share this episode with you today. But before we do, I've got to thank our sponsors. First of all, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. They've been a huge part of this podcast for the last few years. So the Oklahoma Hall of Fame have been sharing Oklahoma's story through its people since 1927. For more information on the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, go to www.oklahomahof.com. And for daily updates, go to Oklahoma HOF on Instagram and give them a follow. Our other sponsor today is Chicksaw Nation. Now, the Chicksaw Nation have sponsored pretty much everything in Oklahoma. They're a huge supporter of Oklahoma. And it's an honor to have their name and their brand supporting this podcast. So a huge shout out to Governor Anna Toby for supporting this podcast. It really means a lot. And finally, our third sponsor is 988. The Oklahoma 988 Mental Health Lifeline. 988 is a direct three-digit lifeline that connects you with trained behavioral health professionals that can get all Oklahomans the help that they need. Learn more by visiting 988oklahoma.com. That's 988oklahoma.com. And now, let's get into today's episode. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This Is Oklahoma Podcast. Mike Hoon, here, your host, back with another episode. I'm going to talk to you today about some theater, um, some onstage performances, stuff that people should really get out and see because the art of it is, I mean, if you've ever tried to be on stage or even just said your name on stage in front of a 1,000 or 200 or however many people, you get nervous, and I'm one of those people. So I definitely appreciate people who perform in front of stages. Um, my guest today is going to talk about this epic festival that's coming. Theatre Crude Fringe Festival is coming in a couple of weeks, three weeks, four weeks, depending on when you listen to this. But um, the date is going to be, I have it right in front of me somewhere, because I can't read fast enough. 15th to 24th of September at the Jewel Box Theatre in Oklahoma City. And my guest today is Adam Brand to tell us all about it. Adam, thanks for coming down. Thanks for having me. I'm super pumped to hear about it. It's not something that, like, I have a lot of experience in. I remember theatre as a kid going to, like, we call them pantomimes, pantos for mm-hmm. short, mm-hmm. Um, going to, like, the Christmas one, and yeah. they would always hand out candy to the kids, and it was always kind of, like in-your-face slap kind of comedy that was, you know, he's behind you, like all that kind of funny stuff that, you know, when you're 12, you kind of enjoy, and they hand out popcorn and all that cool stuff. But before we dive into the to the, the theater stuff, tell me about you. What, what's kind of like your Oklahoma story? Uh, my Oklahoma story is uh, I basically lived in Minnesota my entire life. Um, grew up in, just over the border, technically, in western Wisconsin, uh-huh. uh, but... Most of my adult life was in Minneapolis. Uh, I met uh, Jenny, who is now my wife. Uh-huh. Uh, she is essentially an army brat. So at some point, I was making some wild declarative statement about this is how people are. Yeah. And she said, wait a second. That may be how people are here, but have you ever lived anywhere else? Um, so we took off on a road trip around the country Visited a bunch of people we knew. A yeah. couple of my friends lived in Oklahoma City. So we came down to visit them, spent about a weekend in OKC. And after we left, we couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah. We needed to come back. So this is where we came. So we're transplants. We've been here since 2016. Okay. Have no plans of leaving. We've loved our time here. Yeah. Um, and this theater festival is our way of contributing to the community and trying mm-hmm. to encourage interaction with this place that we, for some reason, fell in love with after spending a single weekend here back what, in 2016. Uh, what did you do that weekend when you came here? Um, what time of year was it? It was the fall. Okay. No. Sorry, we moved here in the fall. Oh, uh, we that's moved good... here in October of 2016, but we actually visited in the middle of the summer. I want to say that it was late July or early August. Okay, so you, you visited in the worst time yes, possible. Yes, <laughs> it was ridiculously hot outside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we asked our friends, what are the places we need to see to get a feel for this? And they gave us the highlights. They said, go through Bricktown, ride down the canal, uh, go down to the Plaza District, uh, go have some Roxy's ice cream, uh-huh. head up to the Paseo, do some art shopping. Um, yeah, we and yeah. it was great. We loved all those little hot spots. We have That's awesome. just been expanding our circle of places to visit in Oklahoma City ever uh-huh. since. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was lovely. It was a great time. Yeah. That's, 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 that's really cool. Cause like, I obviously am not from here either. And, and I kind of, my parents come to town every two to three years and I get, cause it changes so much. I get to do that with my parents and it's really cool to kind of take them and see their first reactions to places. Cause we get kind of used to the places. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's neat that you came and, and kind of explored and, you know, did, did the, the tourist things. Right. And even now, like if you were to come back, like say you would come back now in, you know, it, without never being here like you would have done so many different things as well right with all the things that have changed the park and everything and that's uh it's neat to be a part of the community right and kind of want to give back to the community as well with you know with the 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 festival you guys are doing but so your background then is in theater i take it yes i've been a stagehand stage carpenter um electrician for pretty much my entire career Mm -hmm. Uh, i spent a lot of time most of my career was with the Children's Theater Company in okay. Minneapolis, Minnesota. They are a great place. If you're ever up there, check out some of the stuff they do. It uh-huh. is it is designed for kids, but the way they put them together, it is really enjoyable mm-hmm. for adults as well. Uh, they also do a panto every Christmas, so yeah. if you ever want another taste of the the American version of panto, right? You should check that out. You are like the only person who understands when I say panto <laughs> that I've ever met over here. Because everyone else just looks at me as like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it's just a show. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's just a show we used to go to at Christmas. Yeah, but once you get a taste of it, you want more. There's just something very yeah. exciting about being able to go to a show and shout at the stage, he's behind you. Right. Yeah, that interactive part, right? We're kind of losing that, you know, with, with technology or with just shows and how easy it is to access, you know, like stuff like that, right? You know, even the first one I went to, since basically going as a kid was uh, was Hamilton like two years ago when it came to town. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> like, why have I not watched this before, right? Because yeah. you just, like, you get lost in TV and all the other stuff, all the other kind of, you know, the the creative sides of things. But I mean, I'm, I'm a YouTube watcher. I could watch like, you know, five, yeah. six people I follow on YouTube and I could watch them all day, right? But it, yeah, like it's that in-person experience. You're laughing together, and and you know it's that's such such a cool experience to have. But back to you getting into into the 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 business. Then, tell me like why? What was like that that switch when you were a kid? Do you think you know I'm gonna get into like you know want to be in, in around theater, film, and movies, and and be a stagehand and stuff like that? Uh, I think it was it was later than being a kid. It was one of these. I I went to went to university and. Uh, sort of fumbled around for the first year, not really knowing what I was doing, but knowing that you, you go to college, you get a degree, you get a good job, that's what you do. Um, but found the theater department. Um, I was uh, raised as a carpenter, mm-hmm. so got into the scene shop, started building scenery, started getting more involved with running things backstage, doing prop design, um, started working as a stage manager yeah. on university productions. And that it just became my degree mm-hmm. path, became my career path, and that's where I stayed. So you're pretty handy then. I I try to be. Yeah. <laughs> what um, other than this festival? What is your day job now? Like my you... day job right now, um, I sort of freelance. I guess okay. is the best word for it. I was working essentially full time for Lyric Theater of Oklahoma as one of their scenic carpenters. Mm-hmm. Um, Pandemic happened, things got sort of upended, so I started picking up part-time, handyman, carpenter things, places. Um, So you can find me all over town if somebody needs something built or or constructed or even deconstructed, that's where I'll be. That's a great skill to have because, like, the the people growing up, right, like, there's always, you know, you see this in, in the news or on social media or any handyman you call, they're never young because no one does it anymore, right? Like there's a shortage for it. I'm, I'm in the real estate industry. So every time I call someone, I have my go-to two or three handymen and, you know, one day one of them's going to call me back and say, I'm done. You know, I don't want to do this anymore because I'm 65, 80, 70 years old, right? But like that skill that you have, you know, I'm the least handy person in the world. <laughs> like I can change a light bulb and a tire and that's about as far as I'll go. Like, that's I'm not ashamed to say this, but my time. wife hangs the pictures in our house. It's like, <laughs> I am, I would put so many holes in the wall, like it wouldn't even be straight. It'd be terrible. Uh, but that's kind of really cool to have. And also then, because you're freelance, you have the your, your own schedule to kind of p- 
put time and effort towards you know passion and obviously this this festival that you guys are doing yeah this festival is essentially my full-time job that i don't get paid for <laughs> i know that feeling too <laughs> <laughs> tell me about uh i guess since jenny's not here sadly tell me about jenny and how like I, I mean how did you guys meet and then how what is she what is her relation to like the theater industry uh jenny is a stage manager okay. and uh overall administrative genius mm -hmm. she um uh, works box office for a couple of companies in town, uh, Jewish Theater of Oklahoma. Uh, she's a, an associate for Lyric Theater of Oklahoma. Um, she's done some ushering for Oklahoma City Repertory Theater Company. So mm -hmm. if you've gone to see live performance in Oklahoma, you've probably seen Jenny. Um, but yeah, she actually went to university in London Oh, wow. At the Central School of Speech and Trauma, mm -hmm. a degree in stage management. Um, but she hit a point in her time over in the UK where her visa options ran out. Yeah. So her passport said, you're American, kicked her back over here, which is great for me of because she got a job stage managing at the Children's Theatre Company in Minneapolis. And that's how we met. Amazing. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean... I'm sure, you know, you would both like to go back to London one day and visit and do that stuff. But yeah, that's, I know the feeling of, of your visa ending, sadly. Uh, I mean, lucky for me, I found a wife uh, <laughs> who kept me in this country and she's amazing. Still married, I promise. She is real for people who listen to this <laughs> podcast and never see her at social engagement. She's a home bird for sure. Uh, but that's really neat. And then, you know, she was obviously used to living overseas and not tied to Minneapolis. So, so made traveling a lot more you know open and to the hey let's just go to Oklahoma City because we love it yeah that's really cool yeah. so when what's tell me about the for people listening that don't really go to theater in Oklahoma or any of the theaters you just mentioned what's the scene like in, in Oklahoma City for theater and, and fa film festivals and stuff like this live performances yeah it is it is great it is um, small but mighty mm -hmm. um, it yeah, that was one of the exciting things about starting this festival was seeing how many people wanted to be involved yeah. and the number of outlets that exist as um, official institutions uh, was not enough to handle the demand of people that wanted to participate. So this was our way of giving just another outlet for all of that amazing creative output that mm -hmm. is in town so that more people can be involved and more people can create um, which is really exciting. It's a great problem to have. Yeah. Um, too many artists and not enough art houses. Yeah. Has there been, uh, since you've been here then in 2016, has there been an increase in this? As you, have, you, have you seen like an increase or a buzz or has it kind of stayed steady since you just kind of like found out all about it and gotten into the scene? Uh, no, I feel like there's been a great increase in theater activity in Oklahoma mm -hmm. City since we got here. Um, a couple of theater companies have, have morphed and shifted, but in the time we've been here, a third act theater company started up. They've got a space in the shops, uh, North Park Mall. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, uh, Oklahoma Indigenous Theater Company, which used to be part of um, Oklahoma City Theater Company. Uh, they have branched off. They are their own company now. Um, Southern Plains Productions, they do a couple performances every summer, starting last summer. They've got one coming up, Lizzie the Rock Musical at the Tower Theater. Mm -hmm. That's Actually, that'll probably have happened by the time you post this podcast, but uh, they have sprung up. Uh, oh my goodness, I'm going to feel terrible that I've forgotten somebody. Uh, Vanguard, they started in 2019 at the same time we did, and uh, they... They survived the, the COVID pandemic hiatus and they're back to producing work again. So yeah, there's been a great Duh. growth of activity in town. Which That's has been I mean, really fun to be a part of. Yeah, like I mean, the rising tide lifts all boats, right? That, yeah. And I'm terrible at quotes, but I think I got that one right. <laughs> uh, you know, just to have that love and, and need, and and have the you know, there's nothing nothing worse than ha starting a business or having a hobby and having nobody around to participate, right? Like back to what you just said, like there is an abundance of people here who have this need to be on stage, and and the the love of the arts in Oklahoma City clearly is ever growing not just through theater but any other you know i guess whatever uh, i'm trying to think of my words any other um you know genre i guess would be the right way to put it of performing arts or arts in general it's really cool to be a part of yeah it's awesome so you mentioned you started in 2019 yes so for the three years i guess that you were here um before starting or two and a bit 
what kind of led to this? Like, were you just, I mean, what leads to you thinking, you know what, we should do our own? Yeah, it was getting accustomed to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, because we were transplants and we came down here just because we felt this excitement um, that we couldn't place a finger on why we liked it so much. We spent the first couple of years being uh, normal people. I'll, I'll put that in big old air quotes. Yeah. We got consumers. Desk, yeah, we got desk yeah. jobs that provided us with benefits. Worked nine to five, 40 hours a week, salary. Yeah. You know, all the perks of that. Um, but it, it lacked that energy and create, creative output uh, that we were looking for. So over that time, we had met uh, several people who were involved in the theater community, and we introduced ourselves. We said, hey, we did theater up in Minnesota. We'd like to get involved here. What can we do? How can we get involved? And then we just started using those connections and found places to help out. And where we saw a need, we tried to create uh, this, this festival so that yeah. more, more people could be involved. So the festival started then in 19, is that what you're saying? Yes, our first okay. festival was in October of 2019. Okay. And then no, nothing in 20 because of COVID? Or do we you manage went, to say We that? went virtual. It was all okay. online. People yeah. essentially made little films. Yeah. So they would... It was, it was the same type of thing where they would create their stage performance. Mm -hmm. uh, some people made films and edited, created shots, did lighting. Others, they performed their piece on a stage and put a camera in the room, pressed yeah, record. Yeah. But we had that up online, um, free to view for anyone. And we inserted tip jar links. So if people were feeling generous and wanted to support the artists that had mm -hmm. created the work, they could pay those artists directly through those links. Um, so that was 2020. Yeah. 21, we brought back the in-person, and we also held on to that virtual aspect mm -hmm. so that people who were still not comfortable being out in public could still participate. Sure. And people from other states or other countries even that wanted to participate could submit video recordings of their theater pieces yeah. and we'd present it as part of our festival. How cool was that? Getting people from all over just yeah. saying, you know, yeah, we'd love to be a part of this. Yeah. Like that's, that's pretty, I mean, the beauty of technology, right? Uh -huh. That's really cool to have. And, you know, someone who wants to be a part of your festival that gets to film their thing in a different state that's, or even a different country, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Where's the name come from? Uh, the name came from, we were trying to think of something that would honor Oklahoma without just calling it the Oklahoma Fringe Festival. Yeah. Um, and we know that the, the oil industry is a big part of Oklahoma and what had drove Oklahoma becoming the state that it is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, fool, foolishly, we thought it was a good idea to call it theater crude, as in yeah. crude oil. Uh, unfortunately, we've noticed that most of the time when we say it, people think crude as in raunchy. Oh, that's the which, first thing I thought of. Which it is, it is not. Yeah. It, it can be. Right. Sometimes that happens. Double we don't, meaning there. We don't censor the performances. So right. It, some of them can get a little raunchy. Yeah. Not all of them, though. But it is, yeah, it is supposed to be crude oil. Okay, so I'm glad you clarified that. We're going I, for the oil reference. Hey, the first thing I thought of was like, okay, theater, crude. Okay, like, let me check this out first. Yeah, uh, we had the blinders on. We thought we were so brilliant. Yes, theater, crude oil. Uh, we didn't focus test it or anything. Doesn't matter. We hey, if people show up, that's all that matters, right? And you might have people showing up to like, hey, where's the crude stuff? We, well, we're here for the crude stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, sorry. Uh, so you mentioned there's a lot of performing stuff going on. There's a lot of different genres in this. Yeah. Um, and on one of the postcards you just gave me, I'm not going to name all of them because there's a lot. But one of the things that stand out for me, um, you have puppet shows as well, mm -hmm. which is cool. Uh, but animation, um, hip hop, musical, drama, interactive, supernatural. What's supernatural? There is a production this year called Play on Seance. Okay. And um, again, I haven't seen any of these things yet. The way we accept people into the festival is they pitch an idea. We give it to a, a group of people who then sort of dig through and look for the widest variety and the most passionate sales pitches, mm -hmm. essentially, and then we put them in the festival. The first time I will get to see any of these is when they show up for their tech rehearsal a week before the festival starts. Yeah. So at this point in time, all I can tell you is what I have gleaned from their sales So pitch. that's what they told you, was their, it's super net. Play okay. on Seance is a 
live seance conducted on stage with the help of the audience. Okay. I love that. So if you want to try and speak to some spirits across the veil, come on out to play on seance yeah. at the Theater Crude French Festival and, and see see if you can meet any ghosts or spirits. That's, uh, I am like scared of the dark, right? <laughs> so, but like, I always, I don't watch scary movie stuff because of that exact thing. Like, I tell people I got scared watching the first ever Mummy movie because I was like, the mummy jumped out and I lost my brain. Um, but my wife loves scary stuff. There's always one person in the couple who loves scary mm. stuff, right? And it's, it's my wife, not me. Um, but like the spiritual thing is different because like, you know, we all have that kind of sense, I think, that like, you know, you, you always hear your own voice in your head, right? Do this, don't do this, whatever. Or like the figure on your shoulder kind of thing to put it in a movie type th- scene. But like, it's got there's got to be people. I, have the, I think I have like the thought that there's definitely people like spirits ghosts whatever out there that like have influences on things that we do decisions we make people we see paths we take i mean i don't know what do you think yeah it's it's hard to say right Um, the concept i mean we don't know for sure but yeah and once you get enough people together who all buy into a concept yeah uh, amazing things can happen yeah. T- tying it back to live performance, when you're in with that group of people, mm-hmm. who who knows what you're creating? That many minds combined. Yeah, it's it's fascinating <laughs> to me. Like I said, I don't like scary stuff, but if it's like, I mean, different than scary, like I'm kind of interested. Uh, there's a lot of cool different kind of um, genres and, and and pitches that you guys have had. And you just mentioned the process and what's it like or what has it been like over the last few years seeing that act for the first time at like their tech rehearsal and just thinking this is going to be amazing or I'd rather not watch this one. Uh, This is where my approach to theater really fits in in that I get super stoked about all of these things um, as long as the people making it are really excited about it. So there are times where I have seen performances that are amazing, and I love to tell people this is amazing, you should come see this amazing work. Um, And then there are other performances that I see that aren't great, but something about the passion behind it makes me tell people, you you need to see this anyway. You, You probably won't enjoy it in the strict sense of this is a high quality piece of work, but you will enjoy it in that this is a project that the people who have made it are super into. Mm. Yeah, um, and you appreciate their yeah their just creativity and passion for what they do. Because that's the beauty of art, right? Is it could be anything, but seeing the passion and meaning, and and you know you could see a painting on the wall or someone doing a performance, and you think oh, that was I mean what was that? And then they explain it to you, like now I get it. Now I kind of want to watch it again, yeah. right? Which is the cool thing. I mean I. I'm terrible at painting. <laughs> my art teacher thought I was decent at it and she wanted me to continue as a career and I almost broke her heart. I think I did break her heart when I told her I wasn't going to do it in college uh, you know, or follow it as a career, but I didn't think I was any good, but I was also, I didn't have any passion in it. I wanted to hit golf balls and run around like a teenager does. Yeah. So that passion is key, isn't it, to have yeah. that? Because it, especially on stage, it comes across if you don't have, you know, love what you do or really want to be there because it's written all over your face. Yeah. So. Yeah. And we know that not everything is for everyone. Mm -hmm. So that is another goal of the festival is that we provide such a wide variety. Yeah. If you don't like the first show you saw, go to the next one. It's going to be completely different. You might love that one. Yeah. You might find out that existentialism is not a thing that you're into. Um, so then you go see the the broad comedy that plays afterwards, and yeah. you have a great time. It's quite a long festival too, right? It's quite a long yeah. period of time. Ten ten days. Yeah, is that is it all day, like in the night? Like how, how what's the what's kind of like the Saturdays and Sundays are almost all day. Okay. Weekdays it's just the evenings. Yeah. Um, so performances during a weekday could start as early as five thirty. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the weekends they could start as early as one in the afternoon. And then they usually play until about 10 or 11 at night, yeah. every day of the week. So you can actually still go to your 9 to 5 job, people listening, and have a great time. <laughs> Just don't drink too much the first night, because you'll be hung over for the rest of the week. Yeah. If you're over 30, for most of us who have one <laughs> drink, and we get a three or four day hangover, because that's just kind of what happens in life now when you get to 30 years old. Uh, looking at the lineup, 
like I said, you've got a huge variety of people. Is anyone that you're, you have, and anyone that, that's a returning person or anyone that you're super excited to kind of see for the first time? Yeah, we've got a few returning people. Uh, Rodney Brazil uh, mm-hmm. has a show, I believe his company is called Next Stage. Uh, he is performing a show called Meaningless, uh, which is uh, that existentialist sort of thing that I was mm-hmm. talking about. He has actually been touring that show to different fringe festivals around the country this year. Yeah. So it is, it's going to be exciting because we did get a preview performance of that before he left for his tour. So we're curious to see how it has shifted and grown as it has seen live audiences and he's been able to adapt to the, the response that he's gotten. Yeah. Um, let's see, who else... Uh, you can go through them all if you want. We got <laughs> oh time. Oh my goodness! I mean, or just some awesome. of the highlights for you that, right. that you're pumped to to, to have. Yeah, we've got 17 different things for everybody to see. Um, if you include all the virtual showings, mm-hmm. there are five virtual and 12 in-person things that you could see. Um, yeah, returning Collective Arts were here last year. They performed um, public comment last year, which was about um, the defund the police down in Norman, Oklahoma, and all of the town hall meetings that happened around that whole situation. They it, verbatim theater is what it is called. They just mm-hmm. picked up quotes from these town hall meetings yeah. and read them and presented them in a theatrical style, spliced them together to create a a narrative of essentially where the discussion began and where it ended. Very open-ended resolution. It's a little history piece where you go, oh, that's what happened, and it didn't resolve, really. Right. Um, Yeah, it was pretty nuts down there, (laughs) wasn't it? But but then the creative part of the, the, the people putting this together make it into a you know it can be a comedic thing it could be anything right like it's really cool that's i mean and also like they just kind of take what's already been said right and just repurpose it in a story which is that's a neat way to look at things yeah, yeah make, the, more people should do that because it's kind of that, that to me would be really funny yeah if it sounds interesting at all this year they're doing a similar thing this time their historical backdrop is uh, 1930s london mm-hmm um, and it's a story of uh, the population uh, rising up against fascism. Uh, the show is called The Battle of Cable Street. Okay. So that'll be this year. Um, yeah, I guess I'll go alphabetically. Uh, yeah. feel, feel free to cut any hey, we got time. It's crazy. We have, we have got time. <laughs> People need to hear about what's coming. This is your okay. chance to tell everybody what's coming other than the website that they can go to, which I will put the link in the description for the website. All right. But... All right. First, first time at Theater Crude, uh, Joe Coover Magic. Mm-hmm. He is known throughout the city and nationally as well, I believe. He's a fantastic magician, and he will be presenting a piece called Be Kind Rewind, mm-hmm. uh, which is very nostalgia-driven. Uh, the... Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get into spoilers by going into the sales pitch that he gave us, but it's... Uh, going to be presented as if it is 1992. Okay. So yeah. if you were a kid in the 90s, odds are you are going to enjoy every single reference that is made awesome. in this magic show. Um, we've also got the Big Voices Project uh, from Perpetual Motion Dance. They performed at our first two festivals in 2019 and 2020. Uh, they are a big deal in town. They mm-hmm. do aerial work which is amazing to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you haven't checked out anything Perpetual yeah, Motion yeah, Dance yeah. has done. Are a lot of these people local as well? Yes, most of our lineup really this year cool. is local. The ones coming in from out of town, let's see, we've got uh, Emergent Theater, Youth Jam Sesh is coming in from out of town, and God's Work by Twin Nation, they are from out of town as okay. well. But otherwise, it looks like everybody is local, which is great. I mean, part of me says, oh, I'd, I'd love to bring in people from all over to show Oklahoma City what's going on in the rest of the world. But on the other hand, when you've got so many creative people here already, mm-hmm. why why not showcase how amazing this community is? Right. So Back to what you said earlier with we have an abundance of people, we just need to give them a stage to jump on, yeah. which is really cool and makes your job really hard to like limit the people that you actually and curate the people on stage to 
put a compelling show on, right? And hit all kind of different areas of theater that you want to. Yeah, and because of the way we put this together, since we're focused on variety, mm -hmm. uh, it's great that the variety arose out of local. You yeah. didn't have to look outside of Oklahoma in order to find yeah. such a, an amazing variety of ideas and styles. Makes it easy to market as well. Yeah. Right? You don't have to be spending ad dollars all over the country. You're like, hey guys, it's a show. Who wants in? Yeah. And word gets out that, you know, there's a new festival or a festival going on. And the virtual fest, I think, is where most of our outside of town mm -hmm. stuff is going on. So Dithrambos, um, Andy Mandego is California based. I hope I didn't uh, mispronounce their name. Uh, Cracked, Surviving My Life from Roberta Miles, another virtual production. She is from Chicago, based in Chicago. Um, and uh, Mina Lacone's Growing Up Ringside. I do not know where she is based at the moment, um, but she is, uh, let's see. Dubai, the Dubai comedy scene is her home base. So That's a long way away. Where where she spends the rest of her time, uh, how internationally she tours. Uh, yeah, That's I'm, I'm excited to see that piece. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I got her bio here on the laptop and, and, and it says that she's been seen in a hit show Stomp on MTV's The Grind. Uh, yeah, hit show Stomp that's been on MTV's The Grind, Edinburgh Fringe Festival, Theatre of Change Festival, National Lampoon's Film. I mean, Nick, she's she's a heavy hitter. Yeah. Not, you know, to put it in a boxing term, uh -huh. that was that was not intentional, I promise. <laughs> um, take it, take credit for take it. Take credit for it, yeah. Uh, that's really cool to have someone like that come from, or put in some work from Dubai, because, yeah. you know, who, who, you know, if people, if, if you said to me, right, before we started, hey, I'm going to have someone from Dubai submit a work, I would have said, you're out of your mind. There's no way. Like in, in the middle of Oklahoma, right? In yeah. the middle of, like, you know, because everyone in Dubai is, like, loving life, making millions on oil and whatever. Again, the crude thing. Um, that's really neat that you've got someone from Dubai that's that's so kind of well-known in the industry that's submitted something. Like yeah. It's, 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 it's yeah. very exciting. It's like, right. how did you even find us? Yeah. We're, we're a tiny little festival in the middle of Oklahoma. That's so cool. Somehow got got the word and yeah. thought this would be a great place to present your work. So yeah, come on in. So there's been, obviously that's another, you know, there's a moment like that. There, have, have there been other moments like that where you think some person's just submitted something and like, I've never heard of the place or where they're from or they're not from Oklahoma. Like, how has that happened in such a short period of time considering you started in 2019? Uh, I think this one was the most out of the blue that we've had. Um, the, the Fringe Festival Network in the United States is very, very well connected. So when we first started, we reached out to every other festival around town and said, yeah. hey, we're starting a festival, let people know about us. Uh, because a lot of festival artists, they build shows specifically to tour yeah. uh, around various Fringe Festivals. Um, so we said, hey, if, you, if you've got people that are interested in coming to Oklahoma City to present their yeah. crazy little theater piece, send them our way. So in the, in the early years, that was where we got a lot of our submissions was mm -hmm. from referrals through other festivals around the country. Yeah. But I, I honestly have no idea how Mina found out about us. Did you find it hard then to that point? Did you find it hard to sched to find like a scheduled block for you to do it because of the scene that's, that's around the country to kind of fit into, Hey, if people are touring, we want to be like, are you close to like, is there, is there one in like in a surrounding state that's like the week before or week after. So it makes it easy for people to tour around. I would like to say that we had that amount of work <laughs> Mostly it was we had been in Oklahoma long enough that we knew that most of the summer it is unbearable to be outside. Great point. So we said, we, we got to have this in the fall. Yeah. There's no other time that we could do this. And then it worked out that Kansas City has a fringe that is in, I think it's in July. Yeah. Maybe it's early August. I'm sticking my foot in my mouth here with this. This is information I should have. That's all right. Fingertips. That's all right. But clearly there is plenty of festivals around the country that people like tour and go to yeah. and it's a thing. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. St. Have. Louis has a fringe. They're not too far away. There's one in Atlanta. Uh, Fort Worth has a fringe festival. Uh, we've gotten a group that has come up from Fort Worth the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. They didn't get in this year, but they're still great. So if you ever yeah. want to look for Poetic Thespian Productions in Fort Worth, if you're willing to go down to Texas, look them up. They're fantastic. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, fringe everywhere. Omaha just fringe just ended last weekend. Uh, Minnesota Fringe Festival that I used to work at back in my Minneapolis days. That one is happening right now. Um, Have you been back to some of them to see like, oh, I love what these guys do. We should do that. Don't want to do that. But like, have you been back to kind of cherry pick the best parts of what people do and then we, make it into your own? We have been using other touring artists to do the scouting for us. Mm -hmm. There was a show last year called Experimental. Uh, Steven Nicholas, he's a mentalist magician. Uh, he's been doing the Fringe Circuit this year, and we check in with him every so often to say, oh, we, we see you just did Denver Fringe. Is there anything they did that you wish we had done when you were here? Um, so that's how we get a lot of our info. But that's it would the be best way to do it. Great to have the financial stability someday, right? Yeah, <laughs> to actually tour around and visit these fringes and see the productions that are happening. Yeah, but, yeah. You know how how it goes. Being yeah, well, you can just you can take them <laughs> off the box, right? Like yeah. it, it's kind of like the people who tour and go to see a baseball game in every MLB stadium. Like you just go and tick off the places you've been, and you know, and then you use it as a business expense because mm -hmm. it's. The, Time to get, you know, it's, it's obviously a scouting mission. You know, yeah. there's, you know, you're not just going for a vacation. Uh, tell me about the workshops you guys got going on, because clearly it sounds like, just from looking at the website, uh, it looks like you guys are very open to not just people who have been spent their life in theatre, but putting on workshops brings in people who are new to it as well. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's um, it's another way of trying to engage the community. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see something that is exciting that has inspired you to want to get involved, we also want to provide that entry point to get involved. So once an artist has been accepted into the festival, we ask all of them, do you have any interest in teaching a workshop? And if you do, what would you want to teach people? Um, so this year, the way Availability worked out and interest from artists worked out. We've got three workshops. Uh, one of them is from Perpetual Motion. They'll mm -hmm. teach some aerial dance. So if you're interested in learning what it's like to do aerial work, they'll give you a beginner's intro. Don't pull that. on your head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you want to learn some magic tricks to impress your friends at the cocktail parties or, or at the workplace, what have you, yeah. um, Joe Coover is going to do a little mini magic workshop. And Cat Pit of the Cat Master Cycle, which is a crazy show that I would love to tell you about. Um, Do it. We got time. She she is uh, leading a workshop called Prop Design for Humans. So she will teach you okay. how to build uh, stage props. Uh, That's because, your area, that is right. Yeah, you'd think that stage props. It's oh, we need a chair on stage. You just get a chair, or we need uh, a newspaper. Just get a newspaper. Unfortunately, theater being the way it is, you need this specific newspaper that can be used in a specific way this amount of times before it needs to be replaced, or this specific yeah. chair that fits this time period that is going to be used in this specific way. So it gets a little, it gets a little bit more intricate than just yeah. go get a chair in a newspaper. So, so it, it, to, the, to that point then, it's very hard to do the search and find the right things and, and sometimes build the chair the right way. and. Maybe if it's somebody's hitting you with it, it has to break the right way. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of things that go into conscious, like said, oh, just take this chair. Yeah. So, because uh, again, like, I, I kind of love, I love cars. So when I see kind of historical movies, I always kind of look in the background. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll watch a movie two, three times, and sometimes I'll just watch what's in the background to make sure that, like, if, I, if they've taken that level of detail to put period cars in the background as well. So yeah. it's uh, it's interesting. But dive into it. What were you going to say? You, you're really excited about this because it's your area. <laughs> so, like, the workshop sounds awesome. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what Kat has planned for that workshop, but I would recommend it if you're into constructing things with your hands yeah. and if you're kind of detail-oriented. It should be a fun little yeah. workshop to do. Uh, I do remember working at the children's theater. There was a, there's a clown that is part of their company. So I hate whenever, oh, I, I hate it. clowns so much. Yeah, it, yeah, it is my worst clown ever. <laughs> Again, my that was a wife thing. I hate clowns. Oh. All right, all right. However, so we're at odds tell here. me about the clown. I am super. I am a big fan of clowns. Okay. Because of their specificity. Okay. Uh, they know exactly what they want to do of every beat of what they are doing because it is for a reason, okay. for the gag, for the story, makes my job so easy because I know exactly what to make for them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in, at that point, building props for a clown mm -hmm. is, oh, I've been given a 
checklist. If it can't do all of these things, then you've done it wrong. So, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Loved it so much. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the show that Cat is doing, to circle back to that, the Cat Master Cycle, uh, the short blurb is, uh, it's a show about the statistical improbability of sentient existence and cats. Okay. This is one of the shows that will feature puppets. It is uh, a show that features three vignettes about cats and the humans who care for them. And the last one features some cat puppets in space. What is sentient existence? For me, because I do not <laughs> never heard that word before. What is that? Yeah, hu- humans are sentient. Okay. Uh, the the concern of a lot of sci-fi movies in the '80s was that AI would become sentient and take over the planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Skynet. Okay. Skynet, sentient robots. Um, Which is happening, right? Yeah. It's slowly happening. <laughs> It'll happen one day. That's uh, that's super neat. Where I mean, obvi- you know, obviously since 2019. This is still in the early days of you doing it. What's the 10,000 foot view? Where do you want to take this? Uh, We would love to see enough excitement build up that we could expand the festival, maybe take over an entire neighborhood, Mm -hmm. have more than one performance happening at any given time. yeah, the the, lo- the lofty goal is as much of a, a festival, as much of a party as it can become. That That is where we would like to see it go. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's one venue. It's very localized, which in a way makes it very easy. If you've never been to a fringe festival before or if you just want an intro, there's one place to go. There's one thing playing at a time. You show up. We, we are all incredibly kind and excited that you were there yeah. and interested in dipping your toe into this weird little segment of performing art and uh, we'll take care of you Yeah, uh, but it would be great to have a day where Oklahoma City uh, acknowledges that this exists as a really fun, cool block party type situation that takes over an entire neighborhood for an entire week that would be awesome. where you can walk into any building and there's going to be some type of performance happening that would be really cool to that have that like super awesome. that'd be awesome <laughs> <laughs> just to have like such a block done. I mean even if you just did it I don't know in a small district like just you know block off a little like, even just a block like yeah. two two streets like just two or three streets or whatever like that'd be really cool to have tell me a little bit about the venue that you mentioned the dual box theater what's what's the venue like is there quite a bit of history behind it for people who don't know the location and then why you chose that location as well yeah the jewel box theater has quite a history in oklahoma city they um dis- disciples first christian church i believe okay. is the the church that they are associated with uh you'd know it locally as the egg church off of northwest 36th uh-huh. um the church and jewel box theater have since moved out of that building because it too big, too expensive to maintain. So they're now in another building that is behind the Egg Church. Okay. Um, so Jewel Box used to be a theater in the round, essentially. Uh, it is now, they have kept the three quarter thrust set up, which is their seating on three sides of the stage mm-hmm. um, in their new space. Um, but it is, it is a, a larger space from what I can tell. Then again, maybe I'm just uh, misremembering. It's been a while since I was in their old spot. Um, But also recently they got a new um, artistic director, producing director, uh, Derek Kenny. I forget what his official title is, Uh, but he is he is great. And he is trying to expand what Jewelbox does. Um, They have always filled this niche in town of the um, American classics, you know, the ones that make you feel good, Mm -hmm. that you want to go see, you recognize the title, you're going to go see Arsenic and Old Lace, you're going to go see Greater Tuna, because they're they're good, they're light, they're fun. Um, And while he loves that those are there and he can provide those, he also wanted to start branching out into, there are other things available that you could see. Um, So after a conversation with him, and looking at the season that Jewelbox had planned, uh, he thought it would be a great idea if we uh, invaded their space for a while to sort of give his audience a taste of 
how far their programming could go yeah so that uh, maybe people would be more open to coming to see a contemporary piece that was written within the last five years instead of only yeah. going to see um you know your kaufman and hart pieces yeah. that's probably the tough part in just art in general and then performing is getting people out of their comfort zone to come and see something they're not used to coming to see right because they don't they've never experienced it before so they don't know they need this in their life <laughs> right so yeah. when you do have it something like that and you do have a show like you know like the festival like yours where you put on such a variety of things it's a great place to go to see everything right not just mm -hmm. oh, okay i'm gonna go one see one show it's comedy and that's it right like you're there a week you know go to everything experience everything and you'll find out hey i have a newfound love for the spiritual thing or the cat or the magic shows like you know we all saw magic shows as a kid and we're like how do you do that go to the workshop and figure that stuff out like it's it's really it's a really cool opportunity and it's a really cool thing you guys are putting on for the community i think that's it's special to do that but also special because it's such a variety of acts that it's not just you know hey for the for the consumer yeah you just you know you're gonna buy a Pass for the whole t full week. I think you know, looking at looking on the website, the, the buy four tickets, right? The, the pass that you can buy four tickets. Take different people every. That's a great idea, because not everybody's going to give you a week of their time, yeah. right? But if you buy four tickets for every show, you know, one person might be super dedicated, but you get to take three different friends the whole time. So yeah. that's super special. Yeah, the and also since the schedule is different every single day, if you've only got one day to come to the festival, it spend one night you will see three to four completely different things yeah. presented in front of you and yeah. yeah yeah they're they're all tasty little snack size theater productions as well they're all less than an hour long mm -hmm. so it one evening is like seeing a three-act play but each act has nothing to do with the act that came after or before it yeah. um yeah yeah, maybe you'll find some new style of theater you didn't even know you liked. Do you and Jenny ever think about jumping on stage? Is Jenny going on stage? <laughs> no. No? Jenny is not going on stage. No? And you being on, like, the, the handyman side of, like, the building side of things, you have no desire to jump on stage either? Not really. No. I, I think about it every so often, yeah. you know, when, when I'm in that right state of mind to go, I, I could do that. Yeah. I could pull that off. Uh, but as soon as I am in front of a group of people... I, that's when I remember. No, no, no. <laughs> Better building Not things. For me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, mate, thank you so much for coming down. I, I mean, really appreciate you guys reaching out and, and, and spreading the word and, and putting this on for, like you said, the community because clearly there is an abundance of artists that need a place to perform and, and you were just one of many new festivals or festivals that have sprung up in the last few years that you know that, that can do this for people because like you said earlier you don't make any money from it right you put just put this on you know right. and it's fun for you to put this on and you know it's just because you love what you do yeah. and, and it's a way to give back and for someone who is a transplant as well I think that's really neat for you to just kind of take ownership and say, you know what, like I live here now and I want to be a part of the community and I, we're going to put on this show and you, Jenny, and then obviously the other board members who are involved, you know, it takes a team. It's not just you two. Yeah. As much as you guys probably work a lot, you know, there is other people involved as well, but, you know, bringing people in, it's, it's really neat. So I want to thank you for coming down. Um, and last thing, where do people find you? What's kind of like the socials and websites that people can find you at? And I guess one tip for seeing the, the seeing the the show this or the the festival this year okay um you can find us our website is theatercrude.org we spell theater the fancy way with the e last the right way <laughs> not the oklahoma way uh -huh. slight dig there uh we can also be found on instagram theater crude okc if you're on twitter or facebook it is theater crude um yeah our, our brand manager keeps asking us to go through the channels to get the Instagram to match the rest of our, our branding, but it's a process. I'm not ready for it yet. Uh, yeah, so that's that's our social: yeah. Facebook, Twitter, Theater Crude, uh, Instagram, Theater Crude OKC, website theatercrude.org. Yes, yeah. where you'll find all the information, get all the updates, see what we're up to. As far as tip for festival. Uh, I've, I've put up a nice little blurb on our website, How to Fringe. 
So you don't need to write this down. You can visit the website to find it. But I would say get that four show pass, buy the Wildcat pass. Uh Uh, Again, stupid naming conventions that I thought were so clever. A wildcatter is somebody who works uh, at an oil well site. They're the person out in the field digging. But then we went and put a cat on it. So, you know. doesn't matter. It makes sense <laughs> to you and the soul that matters. I'll put that link in the description because I'm reading them now and the bullet points in the blue that you've put up, they're great points. And, it, and yeah. like for someone like me who would be a first timer, like this makes a lot of sense. Um, and the last one, it says, alternatively, find Adam. He'll be hanging around in the lobby as well. Yeah. So you'll be there the yeah. whole time. Once the uh, festival starts, I will have seen everything. Yeah. I can tell you something that will fit your tastes mm-hmm. to get you started. And then I will tell you something that does not not fit your tastes in order for you to just sort of see what's out there yeah and then also it says uh the easiest way to fringe is to buy a black gold pass yeah what is that the black gold pass um for 110 dollars, you can get unlimited access to the festival okay um, this unfortunately only works for you it is not a bring a friend pass that's but if you saw everything at the festival you would be paying ten dollars per ticket um so you're saving quite a bit of money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the thing about Unlimited is if you find something you really like and you want to come back and see it multiple times, you can do that. Awesome. This is not a you only come 10 times. This is a Unlimited. You could sit in every single performance all festival long for only 110 bucks. That's a steal. Yeah. I love it. Well, again, thank you so much for coming down. I really appreciate you sharing and putting this on. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of people appreciate this. You're going to get a lot of people through the door. And hopefully this does a little bit to spread the word and get, get people uh, involved and out and send you some websites and make you, you know, sell some tickets from it. And I, I really appreciate you reaching out and wanting to spread the word on, on, on this podcast. It means yeah. a lot. Thank, so. thank you for inviting us out. It's Always. Sad Jenny couldn't make it. Um, obviously, a little minor you know, issues this morning, I guess. Yeah, life, you know, life hits us Festival fast. planning when it's the two of us doing most of the work. Yeah. Sometimes snags happen and somebody's got to go man the phones, so to speak. Well, maybe we'll do it next year or the year after or whatever. We'll figure yeah. something out. We'll do something together. But thanks so much for coming down. For people listening, I'll post the links in the description. You can go to those. Definitely the How to Fringe one because it's littered with some epic points that you need to learn and yeah thanks so much for listening we'll catch you next episode cheers hope you guys enjoyed that great episode thank you so much for listening as always huge shout out to our sponsors the oklahoma hall of fame share an oklahoma story through its people since 1927 for more information on the oklahoma hall of fame go to www.oklahomahof.com and follow them on instagram for daily updates at oklahoma hof our other sponsor the chickasaw nation amazing sponsor they do amazing things for the state and they're always sponsoring something in oklahoma they're a huge supporter of oklahoma and without their support we wouldn't be able to do what we do and finally our third sponsor for today the oklahoma 988 mental health lifeline 988 is the direct three-digit lifeline that connects you with the trained behavioral health professionals that can get all oklahomans the help that they need learn more by visiting 988oklahoma.com It's 988oklahoma.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. We are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories. For more great Oklahoma content, follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram.